Should you buy a house? Well, according to a Bloomberg study, home buyers who bought homes all the way back in 2019 are 158,000 bucks richer because of said purchase. So when you're having conversations about unaffordability, you might want to add this little talking point to that conversation because that conversation is probably going to begin something like this. According to Redfin, home buyers just lost $33,000 in spending power because rates are now up to 7% on average. A home buyer on a $3,000 monthly budget can afford a $442,500 home with a 7% mortgage rate. The daily average 30% fixed rate on October 28th. That buyer has lost $33,250 in purchasing power over the last six weeks. They could have purchased a $475,750 home with the 6.11% average rate on September 17th. That was the lowest level since February 2023. That's a big number, and that's a lot of people who are out of the purchasing pool right now. So, you know, I hear this from lenders, you know, rate doesn't matter, you don't sell rate. Well, rate doesn't matter until rate does matter. Now, I don't sell the lowest rates, but I mean, I have them. Because from a loan officer's perspective, it's really a matter of choice. You can pick the company that you're working with that are going to get you the best rates out there. You don't need to sell rate, but it sure is nice to have that as an option, isn't it? I mean, if you guys want, hit us up. It's down below, there's a better way. Now, get a load of this. Freddie Mac has seen a nearly 55% reduction in repurchase requests from its peak in the first quarter of 2023 and a decline of 20% in actual buybacks of performing loans quarter over quarter in Q3 of 2024. But public filings analyzed by Inside Mortgage Finance, which considers repurchase requests and actual repurchases of performing and non-performing loans, revealed an increase to $430 million in Q2 of 2024, up 29% from the previous quarter. That's right, all those wonderful non-performing loans are increasing up a whopping 29%. You know, from a loan officer's perspective, I see this as good news because somebody's gonna write the loans on those vacated houses that are not performing right now. But here's the one, buybacks. See, when a loan doesn't perform, that loan is scrutinized to death. And if any material defects are found anywhere on that file, your company's gonna buy that loan back and nobody wants that. So qualifying your loans going forward might get a little bit more sticky. In other words, you might see your condition list a little bit longer than they have been in the past as lenders start looking at some of these numbers and realizing that buybacks are not for them. So, loan officers, make sure what you're doing today is writing a clean file. And you might want to do something like loan officer and good friend of mine, Kathleen Beck, would tell you, put a cover letter on all of your submissions. Try to make your files easy to figure out for your underwriters as humanly possible. Because when you do this, it helps them out. And when you help them out, maybe some of those condition lists just get a little bit shorter on future submissions. Keep all those lines clear, guys, because, because longer underwriting lists just means longer turn times for you and those who you work with. Hope this helps. You guys have a great day. <laughs> Hey, listen, my great friends over at Oaktree, they're doing a webinar on the 19th of this month at 10 o'clock Pacific Standard Time, and they're going to talk about expectations on all your non-QM deals. You need to be working with somebody who exclusively does non-QM deals like Oaktree because you're going to get the pricing and the products and exceptions on your file. So don't miss this one. It's going to be a big one.